Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of our round table session. My name is Sarah Filio and I have the Matilda Swanson Gallery located in Clarksburg, Ontario. We represent about 30 to 40 different artists. Most of them are local, but we do have some from all across Canada as well, including four of these lovely ladies here today, Andrea, Bonnie, Joan and Adele. Thank you for virtually being here today. Let's begin with introduction. Bonnie Gardner, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Bonnie Gardner and I live Grey County, just to the east of Chatsworth, out in the country, on a four-acre property. So I'm lucky because if they say that we have to stay housebound, I'll still probably be able to go outside a little bit. And um, I don't know, I've, I've been turfing and going through a lot of stuff and um, I, I was a writer, I, I still think I am, and I'm looking at a lot of my writing right now. So it's interesting, but I still love painting. I find painting easier and instant gratification. Hmm. Joan Armour. So I live in Richmond Hill. And I have a cottage on Lake Eugenia, which is south of uh, Clarksburg, off of uh, 13. And I paint um, strictly landscapes. And um, let's see, I'm surrounded by nature in my home and where my cottage is. And it's, it, it inspires me to paint nature. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Andrea Curry. Hello, I'm Andrea Curry. I'm based in Toronto and Tobermory, Ontario. I specialize in pen and ink tree drawings. I have a fascination with nature that I find a lot of my work gets enveloped uh, a part of um, the great the great unknown as much as what we see. I find that I'm inspired by people, lives, and journey, and a lot of that gets translated into my work. Thank you. Adele Derkowski. Hello there. <laughs> I live in Wasaga Beach and I like painting portraits. I like painting them in oils and I do dabble with acrylics. Hmm. I really don't care for landscape even though I like walking out there but it doesn't inspire me to paint it. <laughs> Thank you. First question. How does creating art make you feel? Happy. <laughs> I'll jump in. Uh, art makes me feel a part of something uh, incredible. Makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing something that I need to know for myself as much as that I want to see within other people. I find art is a great communication. It's a language as much as it is an expression. Good. Cool. Oh. I find it a creative process and my background as a yoga instructor, I use it a little bit as a meditation. Yeah. Bonnie, I'm sure you can relate to that. Yoga depends instructor. It depends on the day. Um, most of the time when I'm painting, I find it very relaxing and um, I like beginning paintings. I'm not, I paint very loosely, so I find the last stage is very frustrating. I have very many um, started paintings, not very many, mm -hmm. um, but I find the time just goes and if I can make myself go to the studio and sometimes it'll just be okay, I'm just going to put wires on these or I'm just going to uh, paint this background, then I find and I get in to it and then I'm longer there than I thought I ever would be. So I, I really I really like painting and see what comes out sometimes. It's most of the time not what is in my head that comes out. So um, my brushes have a mind of their own sometimes. Painting, um, painting puts me in a different frame of mind completely and it's more of a, um, needing and wanting to create something 
and it's all about nature. So my inspiration is always from nature and it's a state of mind really. And um, being able to experiment is very exciting. Okay. And basically, that's why I paint nature. It's, it's just a natural state. It, it isn't created. It's just in its natural form. And um, that's what it. So is it is it more of um, an escape than a necessity? Mm. Um, being, um, creating and um, uh, is it a natural state? Is that what you said? Yeah. Is it is it more of an escape, or rather than a necessity? Oh, I have to paint today. Um, oh, it's not, it should never be a necessity, because it never seems to work when it is, because you're forcing yourself, in my opinion, anyway. But um, so an escape, I suppose it is, because you're you're freeing your mind of everything else. So yeah, I'd say it's an escape at, at some level. Mm -hmm. For me, I know that when I when I try to when I have an idea, I don't paint very often, but when I do, I'm always so stressed out about it because I have it in my head and I know what I want it to look like. And I think, how am I even going to do it? And then when I buckle down, I do it, get the paint out, brush hits the canvas and I step back and it's done. And I have no idea how I did it. I have no idea how it, it appeared on the canvas. It just was, um, a, a very meditative process for me. It's, um, I was just curious if everyone else share that experience. I'm going to jump in. It definitely, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, art is a feeling. Like I said, art makes me happy when I want to take something that's in my mind or that feeling and make it a, a, a something tangible, like a thing. I feel like in that translation from the dialogue that I was having within my within my mind versus whatever natural landscape or tree that I want to iconicize in my work and when I'm actually able to do that again stepping away thinking that I do that did I create that mm -hmm. it also becomes this uh almost an enamored feeling of of wanting to do that again and again and again so is it escape or necessity and I feel like the two blend very well together and escape from doing something you don't want to do whether it's dishes paying your bills or you know the necessities of that but then also realizing that feeling that I want to harness on the inside that's a necessity that's how I want to live that's how I want to live my life and I feel that those pieces of work that we create when we are as surprised from ourselves and what we're able to accomplish and create the viewer also receives that on some energetic level or just from a, a feeling of admiration do you listen to music while you paint? And if so, what kind? I listen to big band music, a lot of instrumental. I also like R&B, old, uh, old school jazz, soul music. I like a lot of rhythm when I'm working. I, I, I enjoy music with lyrics, but there's something also just that has to do with the, um, the orchestra and really listening to uh, to the instruments all alone, I find they're they're very um, they're helpful for me to to create with that with that rhythm and that with that musical flow, flow as well as I find it uh, time evaporates when you're really immersed in what you love doing and I find classical music is awesome for that. Yeah, you can see that in your work. You can see the music in your work. Mm -hmm. yeah. The rhythm. Yeah, Bonnie. Um, again, it depends what day it is. I do have, um, I like to listen to a lot of Zen music on car. Uh, I've got a streaming station, um, so they get chanting on there sometimes. I do have an instrumental, I think, of Eric Clapton that was my mom's, and she passed away last year, so I've really been enjoying It's Golden Heart, and I really enjoy listening to that right now. I don't know um, why. I just imagine her. I don't like loud music. I like I do like loud music, but not when I'm in the studio. And um, I sometimes I don't have any music on at all. It just depends. Mm -hmm. Joan, I definitely.
definitely listen to music and I play music uh, with a beat, with a fast beat because I paint so fast mm -hmm. and it's almost like I could dance as I'm painting. I mean, it's a mood, but I always listen to music and I never have silence painting. And I don't know why, but I love noise and I rarely have silence in my daily life. So definitely have to have music and it has to be fun music. So it, um, it sort of helps, helps me move quickly, paint quickly. I don't like to, you know, move slowly because I find it's spontaneous and it helps me do that. So, um, yeah, can't paint without music. Mm -hmm. I have a difficult time doing anything without music playing. And I, I, as Bonnie said, it depends on the day and depends what you're doing. Um, if I'm doing computer work, I, I need classical music. If I'm painting, I often like upbeat music with rhythm, with groove and uh, a quick tempo to again, get that brush, the quick brush strokes and, and, um, painting goes by quicker and and I find the colors are much brighter and happier when I have the the more of a beat compared to when I paint if I'm listening to classical music and I get as same with you Joan I can't have silence <laughs> maybe that says a lot about me <laughs> I can't have silence <laughs> Adele well, I'm the opposite. I just, <laughs> I don't even think about putting the music on. I just paint in silence. But having heard what you've said, it all sounds very positive. Maybe I'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> Be rocking out in your studio soon, Adele. <laughs> I'll try See it. Some completely new art. That'll be interesting, actually. It would be really um, fascinating to see the difference. Like, yeah. There is even a difference. There may not be, but yeah. I want to see an artist playlist and all the different variations. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. yeah that would be great. I like that idea. Is the, is the artistic life a lonely lifestyle? Hmm. As Bonnie leaves the room. <laughs> <laughs> For an introvert or an extrovert, there's a good one. The introvert of me, no, doesn't think so. The extrovert in me says, yes, of course it is. I guess it just depends. Um, a lot of the time I close my studio to the public, like when I'm working in various galleries or have, you know, your pop-up shows and, and whatnot. If I know I have to be on, I'll create a little piece for people to see my technique. But generally speaking, I don't like working with other people. I don't like having that energy in my own space. So I have to, I need it to be uh, uh, an alone experience. I don't want to create with anyone else around. Uh, but I think we do this for a reason. We, we create our studios, whether they're going to be in a, in a co-op community or whether they're in our own private space. I feel like we will set that up and uh, we can open that up for, for di different uh, areas. But I like being alone. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, you need to paint. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Adele. Cool. I was just going to say, I find that when I'm with a group, my artwork is quite different. It's almost like I'm picking up everybody's energy. And then when I come home on my own, it's different again. So I'm not sure which of my artwork is actually me. <laughs> oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, what I was going to say is you're, you have the luxury of painting at home in a beautiful studio, and then you have your husband, Peter, who is another professional artist, and then you have Studio 20, which is a whole group of artists that you paint together. So you go from, you know, from three extremes. What, what do you feel most comfortable with, or are they all you? Again, depending on the day. Yeah, depending on the day. Um, Peter does paint out in the big studio by himself. He has encouraged me to go out there. Um, I prefer, my studio is a um, converted bedroom. It's got south and west windows. And I prefer painting in there by myself. 
Um, when we paint with Studio 20, there's up to 20 to 22 members in the studio. I usually do not do finishing touches on a painting when I'm painting with them. I'm usually starting something, doing the basics. Um, it's a really fun group to paint with, and but it can be a little distracting. And we do have a good uh, critique at the end of each painting session, which is helpful. And it is um, good to see how other people attack their work. <laughs> um, but I, I do, I'm an introvert and I like to be on my own. Um, yeah, Joan? I prefer being alone. Yeah, Joan? I uh, normally get my um, inspiration from the small sketches that I paint, you know, um, out in the country, you know, uh, on my own. And I have invited uh, friends um, to paint with me and we <clears throat> keep our distance and paint our little sketches. And then I use those for, um, you know, a reference for a larger piece. Um, but generally, I like to paint on my own. I am definitely an introvert. Um, I just find there are other energy around if there's other people in the room and it, um, I don't have a great attention span for other things happening around me. So um, I prefer to paint alone and with my music. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have a studio above the gallery and I love being in there alone and I Ever since I was a kid, I could never, I could never work in school. I could never do the simple assignments. I couldn't do anything if I was surrounded by people. I was, like you said, Joan, short attention span. But when I, I'm alone, I can focus and get it done very quickly. I having the studio, I, I don't like working with people, and I can't work with people around me. But there's just this one fellow who I can paint with. And he's in the studio working on another art project and he, it doesn't bother me at all. And he actually helps me if I'm stuck. Does it need more green hair? Does it need, what does it need? And uh, I've never experienced that before. And uh, I can't imagine experiencing it ever again. Um, so it's just uh, interesting having those dynamics. Um, I've heard the word introvert three times one two three who else do we all call ourselves introverts i know i certainly identify with that mostly primarily even though people are always shocked to hear that but you said it very well andrea you put it on when it's time to go on we put it on and no one would have a clue that we're introverts um adele do you identify as an introvert as well oh definitely I think there was somewhere a definition of an introvert that when you're with people, they suck up your energy and come home exhausted. Yeah. So definitely introvert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't, you don't want to talk to me after 5 PM when I've closed the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't talk to me. <laughs> you know, we just like we can talk and you say other than the, pandemic which is very very unsettling and very serious um this world is an introvert's dream there's no place to go and you don't have to say no um but in all seriousness um, i mean it, it is um a sad situation um but i'm like yay no excuses nobody's gonna ask me to go anywhere yeah uh, and the thing is we um i also saw a meme saying i thought i was an introvert and i'd like to stay at home and i'll change the language a little bit but it was hashtag i like to do whatever the mm, i want person <laughs> so most of us aren't enjoying being told what we can do but um, introverts i think are definitely having an easier time with this i i hate to say it but i'm i'm loving this i'm in my head 100% of the time in my imagination, in my own little world, 100% of the time. And I love it. And I'm feeling more energized and more inspired, more creative, um, just an overall happiness. And I saw a quote, I think it was yesterday online. It was quite funny. Um, introverts, please reach out to your extroverted friends because they have no idea how this works and they're <laughs> suffering. Yeah, that's yeah. true. 
Yeah. Yeah. I had a giggle when I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, I posted it to Facebook. I probably saw it from you then. I mean, maybe, yeah. Salvador Dali was all about his dream being the impetus behind his creation. Do you remember your dreams? Do you discover your next painting in your dreams or find general inspiration from them? No. <laughs> no, I don't <I'll>, know. <laughs> full stop, no. I would say yes. So it's like you yesterday, yes. <laughs> Get right in there. I, um, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, I just said, um, I have a reoccurring dream of the house I grew up in. Um, my parents moved when I was 25. I'm now 38, so, no, quite a few years ago. But since I found out, even before I found out their moving date, I was living out of the country at the time, I, at least once a week, I have a reoccurring dream in the house. The dreams take place in different um, scenarios, depending on what's happening in my real life. But I found that continually... From the first tree that I drew, starting off on my art journey, it's the same iconic oak tree that sat outside my window as I grew up. Mm. And a lot of times in my dreams, if there's an element of fear or anxiety or whatever is happening, I always jump out my window and climb down the tree in my mm. dreams. So I find it very interesting that I'm recreating that same tree in different manifestations and colors and sizes and whatnot. But it's been my anchor throughout this whole this whole process. So I think I have a, a, a love of Dolly and, and, and how he's created the real, the imaginary, and then the, the, the realism intertwined. And I want to create something on my own in that format. And it always starts with the tree. So the mind. Hmm. Fascinating. I've I've been dreaming a lot lately and remembering them, but they're not very nice dreams, so I'm not going to take them into my artwork. But I do have an inter. I probably get more ideas when I'm out walking. I walk a lot, but it's very interesting. I've been doing some paintings of houses and streetscapes lately, and I'm painting a house that's in Durham. Adele, I don't know if you remember. It's the old <laughs> man. It's up by the cenotaph. And I'm on this Facebook page, Derm Memories, and the lady that owns it now just happened to post and say, does anyone have any information about the house that we bought? And I'm like, oh, I'm painting it right now. And then my daughter called me and said, I've been dreaming about that house, mom. Oh and like, she didn't want to put that on Facebook because she, you know, didn't want to freak everybody out. But um, so that's just a dream related story, but not my dreams. Definitely the universe is connecting it all together. Little Miss Joan. I can't say I remember, I, I can't remember dreams. Um, I do want to remember my thoughts and how beautiful I see something that really makes my heart race so I'll mm. say to myself I need to remember that and so I'll take a picture and um, you know I'll use that as a reference even but as far as dreams go uh, no I, I can't say I do even looking back for a long time because I have a friend that dreams a lot and it's just amazing listening to her weird dreams um, thought and um, so I don't know why I don't remember them, but maybe, maybe I don't have any. I don't know. Dreams, dreams are fascinating. I, um, I'm a lucid dreamer. I've always been a lucid dreamer and I remember most of them. I have reoccurring dreams like you, Andrea, and I actually base a lot of my life decisions on something I dreamt about the night before or I remember dreaming about it four or five years ago and I remember dreaming of these people now I'm going to sound really nuts people are going to throw me <laughs> in a loony bin after this but I remember having dreams when I was 10 years old and I'm surrounded by these people and I have no idea who they are and then I'll, I, I, I'll meet them now Ooh. and in that exact same scenario uh Dreams are fascinating. And sometimes you're lucky if you don't remember, I think. 
I remember being mm -hmm. going through a period being terrified of going to sleep because I would wake up more exhausted than I had gone to than than what I was before I went to sleep and um, before I learned how to handle handle the whole lucid dreaming and and everything else and the reality of them well that's a good that's a good um little segue in, in in understanding that we're always in control even if we think we don't or we aren't even in situations like this with the COVID-19 we can't control what's going to happen but right now I'm in control of my my emotions I'm in control of my actions what I do next I'm in control of my thoughts I'm not going to let any, get anything get away from me. And sometimes when we're in that lucid state dreaming, there's that overwhelming fe feeling of I'm a pawn. I'm not, I'm not in charge of anything. And I find that the biggest shift for me, if I'm feeling afraid or scared, if I'm having a dream turned sideways, it's knowing that when I do wake up to really want to maybe find the message in it, but then just to shake it off, have a shower and know that it was just a dream. It was just a dream. I control of this moment <laughs> everything will be okay this too shall pass mm -hmm. what is an artist's role in society uh, to present something to people to see them in a different way to mm -hmm. think differently i agree with that yeah mm -hmm. to challenge the ordinary to open up the discussion I think maybe to slow people down to really see what they're looking at. So I think as artists, we've already done that. And that opens up the invitation for the public to slow down and know. Well, yeah, and to, to have an appreciation of certain uh, angles of life. Um, for me, it's about nature but to appreciate it, just actually slow down and see something differently or to see it all instead of getting caught up in your fast paced life. Um, but um, to be open-minded too, you know, remind people to be open-minded about different angles of looking at things. To instill an awe factor. I mean, walking around a city instead of just having bland rectangle structures, you then can look at, well, look at that architecture, architecture and look at the design that he created. You know, how can we take something and make it different, not better, just different. And I find that diversity or difference is what makes the world so interesting. And I feel like as an artist, whatever your medium is, whatever your message is, the fact that you're that you're willing to express your voice and to stand up for what you think is is a new thing or a beautiful thing is is a way that we all can be connected together because if we're all the same what joy would that be we wouldn't we wouldn't be growing i don't think very much um i would say maybe offering a different perspective on reality as well and i'll I'll use, uh, I'll pick on Peter, <laughs> Peter John Reed. Uh, he has a vast array of landscapes and I'll be driving through our countryside, our beautiful countryside here, and I'll notice a Peter painting. And I think, oh, I never saw that before. The years I've been driving past that and I, I never saw it the way he did. And now I do. And I'll see Joan's paintings, I'll see Suzette Terry's paintings, and it just offers you a different perspective. And then you can start to be able to start seeing it through the lens of other artists. It's a really fascinating, um, fascinating way of living, I think. Um, yeah, I would say different, offering different perception of reality, which we all need, I'm sure. I think we need to, to be creative in order to progress in life. Uh, mm -hmm. enjoy. So um, there's all levels of creativity, but to me, art um, just it's just one medium of, of of an expression of being creative, and um, it'd be a dull wor world without it. Um, 
You bring in energy, energy in life. Yes. And color into life. Yes. Uh, and innovation, so world, too. Sorry? Sorry to interrupt. The innovation, art and innovation, um, piggybacking on one another. Like you said, you, you're looking at something that every day driving a, a same similar route. And much like Mother Nature has a way of always finding a new way to, to reinvent itself within the, the color scheme of a landscape, I feel that the appreciation of looking into somebody else's lens helps us understand our own own and, and appreciate the, 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 the changing and, and the growth that we experience when we are stepping into somebody else's perspective. What and to I think to capture special moments, um, oh. whatever you know, because some of them are very fleeting, and to capture them for someone else when it resonates with someone else, that's mm. what the artist wants to do, right? I do. That's so lovely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's a gift. It's a gift that you give the public, I believe, of yourself. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's not pretty sometimes, <laughs> but it's a gift. Take it or leave it. What has been the greatest lesson you've learned in the art world? I'd say to be humble. It's, it's a humbling experience because all kinds of things can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and you have no control over it sometimes. Yeah, it's very humbling. That's what I would say. Mine would be if you have an idea, write it down. <laughs> Take a picture. Document it. Because as quickly as it comes, as quickly as it leaves. So to to <laughs> to really be vigilant on your own on your own inspiration process and understand that things are uh, they're they're magical and but magical doesn't want to be kept in a box magic doesn't want to be harnessed magic magic is free so enjoying that freedom of of the journey as well as knowing that <laughs> write it down hmm. famous last word i'll remember that <laughs> I, I would think um yeah that i had a thought but it's gone i'll think of think a bit more just go ahead oh i was thinking that um you can't lie to yourself when you're doing art. You have to be honest with what you're doing and how you're doing and even the materials you want to use. You can't mm -hmm. use somebody else's materials and try to make your art. <laughs> True. That's good. I think you should just turn up. Even if it's for yourself, you should turn up. Um, don't worry about whether it's going to connect with anyone else. Do it for yourself. Um, and see what happens. Don't get discouraged. I would say there's no right and there's no wrong. Yeah. Every, every painting, every creation, every piece of music speaks to someone and not to everyone. There's just because one person doesn't like your painting doesn't mean the next person won't fall in love with it. Exactly. Beauty, either beholder, right? Mm -hmm. And art is subjective. And that's why it's nice that we are all different because otherwise we'd all be painting the same thing to give to the masses. And it wouldn't necessarily be ourselves that we're off. Why, why art? Why, why be an artist? I'm crummy at math. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when a certain instructor starts talking science and math about paintings, it's like, oh, seriously, then I'm going to give up because, um, I don't know, it's just freeing. There, there are no steadfast rules to have to follow. There's no, um, not when I paint anyway. Um, it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's not math. It's not math. It's That's hilarious. Not it's very visual. Oh. visual right? Yes. Um, so it, it's, it's satisfying in that respect. And it isn't as structured as, say, math or, you know, left brain, right brain. Um, 
I believe I'm very, very right brain and no left brain. So that would be the math side as well. Um, so, and that's, that's why it works for me. And there's not as many rules. Um, it's a, it's freedom to do what you want to do. And so that works for me. I'm going to uh, jump on to that comment. I believe, I agree completely. I feel like art is the center. Everything else goes around it. But art is, because it's coming from such a genuine place. It comes from the inside. It comes from a thought and inspiration, something that you can't hold on to, but maybe you, you want to recreate or capture within yourself. But I feel like that is, the, the all roads lead to the heart from the heart. That's like art. So I feel like we piggyback with science, math, social studies, geography, all the other subjects. But at the end of the day, when we want to create something to explain what we did, this coronavirus, well, what is it? Well, we're going to create now the model to show you what it looks like. And we're going to show you the, the plan and how we're going to roll this out. But let me show you the map and the colors of how we're going to do this. So I find that that becomes that physical concrete thing from that abstract idea or, or thought. So art is the center. It's, it's what we're creating from. And, and what an honor to be able to do this and to be received in doing it. I have a background in the arts, I guess. I was brought up dancing ballet and playing the piano in a musical family with singing and knowing your harmony and theories, which is mathematical. <laughs> and also I tried all sorts of craft work, quilting, embroidery, sewing. But going into painting and drawing, it just is quicker and easier to do. You get it down fast. That might be my draw there. I, I think that's why I've switched from writing to painting because I find writing is a very long process. Um, you can give a manuscript to someone to read. They may or may not read it. They might not take the time. It, and painting, you see the result right away on the canvas, good or bad. You can show it to someone. They can give you feedback immediately. Um, so I think the instant gratification is really working for me right now. Shallow as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I find the contrast interesting. If you asked a lawyer or an accountant or anyone else the real job, why they chose that vocation, most would have said because of the money. <laughs> oh. I mean, a lot of you do want to help people, but for the most part, why do you go and get a career? You know, you want a well-paying job. And for me, I never thought of anything but being creative in whatever sense that meant. And I do, they say that mathematics is a universal language. I, I think art, art is, because art, speaks to everyone. Art is music and dance. It's uh, movies, um, visual arts. Nowhere in the world do you go and there's not a film playing, there's no music playing. It's, it's all across the world. It's global. And people are passionate about it. And they, they, they feel from it. I don't think people feel much from mathematics other than um, oh, here's another equation. <laughs> well, it's not like they're doing math problems on the balconies in Italy, right? They're singing. They're singing. <laughs> well, too, I think you have to keep in mind that they've trained their brain to, to love math, probably because they're good at it. And that's how they think. They, um, it's how we trained our, train our brain to go in whatever direction we want it to go into. Um, they must love it or they wouldn't be doing it. But no, I know a lot of people that don't love it. They're not usually, usually not that creative. And they're also, and I think they, a lot of engineers, mathematicians, um, I'd, I'd be interested to see if they really get a lot of art. Maybe they get realism um, because it makes sense to them. They just think differently, in my opinion. 
right? I would, yeah, I kind of agree. Mm -hmm. From the people that I do know, and that with those vocations and the artwork that they gravitate towards. They think, uh, my brother, I'll, I'll use my brother as an example. He's an engineer and he thinks I have the wackiest art. He doesn't, he doesn't yeah. even know what it is. He doesn't get <laughs> Like, what is this? <laughs> what is this color? What is, what is this supposed to be? And, um, but he loves, he still loves art. He's a big fan of art and he loves high realism. Yeah. 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 Well, my parents were very pro-secondary education, and I wanted to take creative writing at York University, and they told me I had to get a real job. And my girlfriend that went to York and took a creative writing course, she's a professor at Ulster University in Ireland, so she got a real job. <laughs> so I spent um, 30 years in offices, absolutely hating my job. Um, I did have a job for 10 years working at a newspaper that really worked out well for me, but of course they downsized, but that, um, you know, I think my parents were trying to do me a favor and thinking, well, you're not going to write and make any money, but it definitely could have branched out from there, but I definitely wasn't going to university to take a math course or science or business. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not a lot of money here, but it's fun. <laughs> Most of the time. Sarah? I think it's important, Sarah. I think what you're doing is it's important, especially now, because we don't have that physical space to connect. So even just for the, the five of us to sit down and say, hello, I see you, you see me, thank you, you know, I got a pulse, we're good. Uh, yeah. As well as to get that, that fire burning for, for that collective and knowing that art does have a purpose. We are supposed to be here. We mm -hmm. are supposed to keep doing what we're doing. And and the fact that we are also different and we're experiencing the same thing, but we're also different. I mean, that says something too. And the one thing that keeps floating around in, in all these viral memes is thank an artist that you're not staring at blank walls. Thank an artist that you're watching Netflix right now and all those great creative projects that have come into life. That music that you're listening to and it, and it, you know, it is like you said, it is a language, and it's really important that we are that we are standing together for this. So thank you all. Mm -hmm. I in one of the last um, sessions, uh, this this came up, and how the artists are not on the front lines. We're not on the front lines. We're not the doctors or the grocery store workers. However, we are in full operation in the background. We are helping he people heal. We are helping people get through this in in every way. Um, and so to discount the arts, to say that the arts are non-essential, that the, the last on the totem pole is, it, it's unfair and it's untrue when you stop and think about it. And I don't think people do. And that's why these are so important. Mm -hmm. I um, got a video from um, a young, beautiful spirit that I do yoga training with. And she's a therapist, and she said, actually seeing people's faces makes people happier. So thank you, Sarah, for bringing us together, because hopefully we'll leave this with our hormones all pumped in a little happier. And I really want to thank you for being such a progressive, ambitious young woman and having your gallery and um, having faith in artists. You're, you're a nice role model, nice young role model uh, for women. and. Um, I'm happy to know you. Oh, wow. Thank you, Bonnie. That's really lovely. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to cry. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Very sweet. Very true. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think it was you. I was chatting with Joan, um, preempting this whole idea. And I, I feel so honored um, and grateful to get to know each and every one of you. And I, I, you inspire me daily and you're all so different and so have so much depth and are, are so intriguing. And I want the rest of the world to be getting to know you as I know you. And as artists, as introverts, we don't often put ourselves out there, but we are the ones having the interesting conversations. We're not talking about the weather. We're having real conversations from the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and Mixed that's, big enough. 
Yeah. And I think it's, especially at this time, it's, it's very important and people are going to see this and it might help some people. Some people will turn it off and go, I don't want to be listening to this crap. And, mm -hmm. but it might help some people who, who really need it. And, and also if it, if no one watches this, at least we're connecting with one another and inspiring one another and the effect it's had for the other people that we've been uh, in the previous sessions there, they can't wait to do more. They're so excited. <laughs> they just want to do more. When are we doing the next one? Gonna, yeah. What are we doing the next one? When, when, I when am I? I should have worn my red tutu. I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll dust it off. Thank you for every, to everyone for participating in this discussion. And thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. Thank, thank you. you. Thank <laughs> you.